Hi and welcome. So today I want to share with you how body shame plays a role in the emotional eating pattern. So if you're new here, welcome. My name is Michelle. I'm a certified holistic nutritionist specializing in emotional eating. And so I wanted to talk about this because when we emotionally eat, there are so many things happening and body shame is part of sort of this vicious cycle. And I totally get it. I felt the same way when I was going through my own emotional eating journey and I've heard it from tens of women. It's like we're emotionally eating, then it's showing up in our body, then we feel more shame and then we emotionally eat because we feel this shame and we're in the cycle and it keeps happening. It's like we're punishing ourselves, but what we're actually doing by emotionally eating is trying to soothe ourselves, trying to do something about the shame. You know, it's so funny in the last week, you know, I've had two distinct women tell me that, you know, they've felt awful in their body at the state that it was in after, you know, not taking care of themselves, emotionally eating. And then in order to feel better, they almost just in their mind said, I'm going to go eat and that's going to make me feel better. Um, because that's the only thing I have to lean on. That's the only thing I know to do to feel better because I don't know what to do. And I'm in this cycle. And so emotional eating is so multi-layered and our body is one key area we need to look at to help us resolve this pattern. It's not everything, but it's a piece of the puzzle. And part of it is because when we emotionally eat, you know, at a certain point, we start noticing how it impacts our physical body. So we might have issues the next day, digestive issues, stomach aches, you know, when we're, we're binging at night and we're eating foods that don't agree with us, we're overeating, we're not digesting well, we might notice it that way, which leads to further issues, which means that our body, when we're emotionally eating, it shifts our body from rest and digest mode. Our body is not in rest and digest mode. It is in fight or flight mode. And that means that we're in a stress state. And in a stress state, as we're going towards the food, our body is already in the stress state. And emotionally eating compounds this stress state. So when we're we're in that sort of binge headspace and we're being really critical, we're already in a stress state, which means our body is in a fight or flight response. And cortisol is being released and our immune system is downregulated. Um, digestive issues are increased because our body doesn't put energy into digestion. We are more, we're going to be inflamed in our body. Inflammation is going to increase. This leads to um, chronic issues, disease. This also leads to weight gain. And so even before we put that first food piece of food in our mouth to binge eat, mentally in our biology, in our biochemistry, we're already in this mode where our body is not in a healthy state. So the other state it can be is in rest and digest. And so in this state, that's where the body is, the nervous system is turned on for health, for improved digestion, improved immunity, releasing weight we no longer need, um, down-regulating inflammation and all of this. And so this is already happening. We're already in the critical state. And now when we eat those foods, we're compounding the issue. The pattern has already been playing before the food even touches our lips, before the food even goes into our body. The negative thought loop about our body, about how we feel, that's already been happening. And of course, if we accumulate this and we keep emotionally eating, we see the impacts on our body. And so part of us thinks part it's the foods we're eating. And yes, the binging foods and the excessive eating of those foods are uh, a piece of it. We need to look at what foods we're putting into our body and the choices we're making but the other piece of it is what's going on under the surface that is making us go to food. What is that deeper pattern making us go to food to soothe? And so in this case, it's a trigger around our body and feeling uncomfortable in our body, feeling shame about our body, feeling out of control. So we feel out of control with food, but the reality is we're out of control with something so much deeper. We're out of control with the thoughts and the emotions under this pattern. Yes, the food is a consequence of that, but we are out of control with those. We don't know how to be with those emotions. We don't know how to be with those thought patterns. We don't even know what's going on. And so this is why we need to use these. It's almost like a trigger to go deeper into what is not working for us. What is 
creating this negativity in us? Why do we feel this shame? Why do we feel uncomfortable in our body? What was told to us to make us feel like we're not good enough? And so this is why we have to dive deeper. And part of this is recognizing how we feel about our body. So if our body looks a certain way and it doesn't match some ideal we have in our head, that triggers stress and shame and actually creates more of that in our life. And so we have to look at what's going on. And part of the way we look at this is to start on one hand, we want to develop a healthy structure around our body. So we want to start having body acceptance, which doesn't mean we like or love our body. We're in a neutral space, so we're no longer criticizing ourselves. We can start appreciating our body where it's at. It doesn't mean it stays here. This is the um, foundation to transformation. We start accepting and understanding the rhythms of our body and the needs of our body where we're currently at. And that always shifts. You know, as we have more body acceptance and we're nourishing our body, you know, this was my journey too. I started to want to move more. That's a natural state of our body. But when we're in the stressful state, we don't want to do that. So we have to cultivate this. And so once we're here, we start digging deeper. What is this body shame about? What is this criticism about? We can dive deeper into what that is all about inside Um, deeper to the core of what that is and where this trauma lives in our body and so we can use somatic tools because these unresolved emotions these unresolved events they live in our body and we need to dive into them we need to actually see what they're about what what limiting beliefs they were creating about our body and to start working with that and getting our true needs met so we can shift into a more empowering way of being and getting our true needs met and moving forward So this loop, it feels like I just need to, you know, that's why we control food. We think if we stop the food, then our body is going to shrink or go back to what's acceptable. When we restrict food and we punish ourselves, it actually creates more stress in our body and that's going to make us Um, accumulate more inflammation and weight and so we have to look at this holistically we have to look at not just the foods and our relationship to food but our relationship to our body and our acceptance of our body and of course the emotions under that are driving this the limiting beliefs driving this we need to look at all of these and that's how we're going to release this cycle of feeling shame and being triggered into emotional eating we're in this loop where we feel shame about our body we're triggered into emotional eating which leads to more body shame and we're in this vicious cycle we need to pull the cycle we need to break this apart and start step by step really addressing this issue and resolving it so it doesn't matter how much you work out or restrict food it's not getting to that deeper pattern of what's really going on for you it's not connecting you back to food because when you are restricting food food becomes an enemy and when you're punishing your body your body becomes an enemy and we're not looking at the deeper issues going on here. So inside of the Emotional Eating Evolution program, we are looking at all of these areas so that you can break that shame cycle with your body and get to acceptance and then appreciation and hopefully then love of your body. But for right now, you know, we move through creating that relationship to food, your body and your emotions so that we shift from this restrictive and this unhealthy way of being with this and thinking we have to restrict food, punish our bodies, you know, bypass our emotions or not understand what's really going on at these deeper levels to shifting to a healthier way of connecting to food our body and our emotions that's going to help us resolve our emotional eating and that's where our nervous system is going to feel more at ease it's going to be in rest and digest and this is the doorway to true health this is the doorway to feeling at ease and peace in your body so if this is resonating for you you can find out more about the emotional eating evolution program below this is a 12-week container with a step-by-step methodology, there is weekly coaching, there's accountability, there's support, there's in-depth somatic meditations to get to the root. The goal of the program is to create a structure so that you can have this healthy relationship to food, your body, and your emotions, while also removing the blockages that are holding you back, the limitations keeping you in this cycle, so that you can finally resolve your emotional eating from the root and feel confident and at ease around food and in your body. So if that's resonating for you, you can find out more at the link below. Um, If you have any questions for me, please let me know. Please be sure to like and subscribe, and I look forward to sharing more with you, and I hope you have a great day.